Hi guys, this is Victoria Ficelli from Durham Lactation. Um, I figured today I would take some time and explain one of my favorite topics, which is how the hormones of lactation works. I'm a big believer that if you're going to be breastfeed, that maybe you should know how the tools work. Because if you understand the machinery, that's going to put you one step closer to being able to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and explain this hormone pathway. And then in honor of National Adoption Day, as well as um, the day when we recognize and celebrate our preterm babies, which happen to fall on the same day, uh, I would talk about how this milk transition and how these hormones work in both those cases. So let's get started. So I got really nerdy about this when I was studying for my boards. I'm an internationally board certified lactation consultant here in Durham, North Carolina. Um, and it took me a while to get the hang of understanding this. And then once I clicked, it made so much sense to me and I've been teaching it to people ever since. So the first hormone that you have coursing through your body if you're pregnant is estrogen. So there are a lot of other hormones going on. I'm going to talk mostly about these three hormones because they're the important hormones in milk transition. So estrogen is a hormone that makes you, this is like your big emotion hormone. This is the hormone that makes you super weepy and happy a lot of the time and then makes you just lose it on your partner at other times, right? That's what estrogen does. Um, and then the second hormone that is in really big supply in pregnancy is progesterone. So progesterone, meaning this is the hormone that keeps you pregnant. I always call this the hush baby hush hormone. It is the hormone that keeps you hot and stupid. This is the hormone that tells your body like, just grow that baby. Don't think too hard. Just be hot and a little dumb at all times while you're pregnant, right? This is the hormone that makes you walk into the kitchen and go, I do not remember why I'm here. Was I, what was I getting? Right? That's what progesterone does. But estrogen and progesterone do another thing too. They suppress a hormone called prolactin, right? Lact being milk. So prolactin being the milk making hormone. So that hormone's right down here. Pro prolactin. And what prolactin's doing is it's the hormone that tells your body to make milk. So right now, when you're pregnant, prolactin is being suppressed by these two hormones. These two hormones are keeping this hormone down. That's because why are you going to spend all this energy making food up here when you're already making food down there, right? All of that energy that's going into that placenta, you're not going to waste that up top. So these hormones are suppressing this hormone until the birth of your placenta. So your body doesn't actually care so much hormonally about the delivery of your baby. It's all about the delivery of the placenta. So we're going to say that this is your baby's birthday right here. That placenta is delivered right along with your baby. And that means that over the course of somewhere between three and seven days, these hormones drop on out. So your estrogen goes and so does your progesterone. You can think of a menstrual cycle as a mini pregnancy, right? Your body sort of sets the scene to be like, just in case we're pregnant, right? And then those hormones drop out. That's what PMS is. It's, it's a mini version of this. So that's why people get the baby blues. This hormone shift makes people really emotional. It feels like a huge hormonal change. That's sort of like, I always joke, it's like PMS on steroids. So if you're feeling sort of like weepy, a little mood swingy, that's all normal for this period of time. It's not normal if you're not able to sleep, if you're not able to trust your baby and other quality caregiving. Um, those kinds of things tell us you're outside of the range. If you're very depressed, if you're really unable to recognize or connect with your baby, it's normal for it to take some time to bond. Um, but those other signs are a sign that there's a mood disorder brewing. But it's normal to have that weepy period as these hormones drop out. So as those hormones drop out, your prolactin is free to roam. And that means that every time your baby nurses, this hormone's going to spike. This is a hormone that only spikes when you use it. So this is a use it or lose it hormone, right? Whereas these hormones are sort of doing their process alone in their background as told by your hypothalamus. And this is a hormone that is stimulated by nursing or pumping. So every time you nurse a pump, that hormone's gonna spike. And that's why we want you to nurse that baby eight to 12 times a day in those first few weeks while they're getting back to birth weight. That's what we're looking to have happen. If for some reason you drop out one of these, maybe your baby needs to be supplemented for a medical reason, 
That's why you want to pump anytime your baby's supplemented. Because you still want to tell your hypothalamus, you still want to tell your body, oh wait, wait, I was going to use that milk. I need that. So you're still going to send that signal to your brain. So this is also where our preterm babies come in. So it's natural, National Preterm, Aware, preterm Birth Awareness Day today. Um, so celebrating all of you families that have been through the NICU, that have worked with preterm babies, such important work. Um, it can be such a challenge to go through that, um, and our hearts are with you if you are going through that right now. The, so often our preterm babies, even up to late preterm babies, are babies who don't need to go to the NICU, who are maybe 34 to 38 weeks, are still often too sleepy to eat. They often don't wake up for their own feedings. They don't engage those natural hormones that tell them to set the signal, right? This is that early cluster feeding. That's those babies having natural reflexes to tell them, wake up a whole bunch of times in the middle of the night to get this milk to transition, to get this message sent to the brain. So our little preterm babies are either not old enough to eat or they're too sleepy to eat, right? So they're going, if they're not old enough to eat, they're gonna be getting all the nutrients that they need via IVs. And if they're just a little sleepy, we're gonna be waking them up to eat, or if they're too sleepy, we're gonna be bottle feeding them and pumping. So that means that we're still sending the signal. So if you have a late preterm baby, or a preterm baby who goes to NICU, what you'll see is a lot of pumping, right? Our NICU moms are the champions of pumping. And they have freezer fulls of milk, often even before their baby is ready to eat. Because if they know that if they wait for their baby to eat, then this hormone pathway doesn't happen. And then their milk isn't there for their babies when their babies are ready to eat. So that's why even if your baby isn't ready to eat, you still pump roughly every three hours or eight to 12 times a day, which can be really grueling, which is why those parents are really tough and have our back and deserve all of our, our love and support. The other thing to notice here, because it's National Adoption Day, um, is in celebration of folks who decided it was the right fit for them to breastfeed adopted babies. So that is possible. People are like, what? You can make milk without having a pregnancy? And you absolutely can. So there's a couple ways to do that. You can do this whole, you can trick your body into doing this whole system, or you can do one piece or the other. So if you're wanting to do the whole big system, you can use synthetic birth control, which uses these two hormones, right? Birth control tricks your body into thinking it's pregnant. So these two hormones are engaged when you're on birth control. So you'll take birth control for a few months under the direction of your doctor um, and wait for those breast changes to happen just like they happen during early pregnancy. And then once that process is finished, we stop taking birth control, we drop out that piece and we start spiking prolactin. We usually, if we have time, we do this a little bit before gotcha day, before your baby comes home, because that's gonna give your body time to do this transition, which takes a little bit longer if you haven't had a pregnancy, either because you're gonna nurse a baby in your family that you didn't carry, um, like in, a, in some kind of a queer family, or if you are going to be welcoming home baby through adoption, right? You're gonna need a little bit more lead up time if you weren't gestating your baby. So that's when you are going to want to still spike that hormone, right? You're going to do that stimulation with the pump roughly eight to 12 times a day. That can like, so we'll sort of adjust this if you have, if you have known lead up time or we can sort of work with it. If your baby's already there and you want to just do this part without the hormone part, you can absolutely use pumping and nursing to stimulate that transition to happen. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that little overview of how the hormones of lactation work and how those work for preterm babies and adoptive families. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below or send me an email at durhamlactation at gmail.com. Thanks so much. Bye.